My name is Gordon. I'm an industrial design student at Philly U, and I run Armadas Designs, which is a design firm specializing in costumes and props. Several months ago, a client came to me with a really interesting commission for a prosthetic hand based off of his favorite video game, Metal Gear Solid V. He was born without a left hand um, and was rather tired of his standard claw-like prosthetic because it's very inhuman and it makes other people uncomfortable as well as not being particularly useful in its own right. But with actual medical grade prosthetics, a good one going for easily upwards of $10,000, it's not affordable in his or most other people's budget. What I planned on designing wouldn't just be implemented for this client specifically, but would be available as uh, open source files for anybody to recreate for themselves. The way every non-motorized design that I found works is the hand is open at rest and in order to tension it, the user flexes what is left of their wrist in order to close the fingers. And I immediately knew this wouldn't work for my client because he had almost nothing of his wrist left, so he'd have pretty much nothing to tension. I decided that it should automatically be closed at rest and should just require user input in order to open and then be placed around an object and grasp it. Once I was happy with these initial finger prototypes, I started working on the actual hand itself, and in order to facilitate that, my client sent me a casting of what was left of his arm, so I had something to work off of and I knew the scale would be correct. This was obviously the most time-consuming part of the entire process. It took uh, several months of prototyping, redesigning, starting over in a couple cases, to complete everything accurately so all the tolerances were correct and it fit him how I wanted to and I was doing it between other commissions and schoolwork so it took it took significantly longer than I wanted it to but that's the nature of the beast. Each finger joint also features a rubber grip pad to help it actually adhere to whatever object it is gripping a little bit easier because it's one thing to actually tension on top of an object and something very different to keep it from sliding out of that tension based on just friction. To open the grip, simply pull the knob at the back, put the hand around whatever the desired object is, and then release so it auto-tightens around that object. This was all done in CAD, uh, which is computer-aided draft, so I could then print out the pieces three-dimensionally, test how they fit together, see how they worked, um, and figure out what I liked best before I actually started constructing the final hand. So obviously the main feature of the hand is a steady grip, but hands are made for more than just gripping objects. So as a secondary feature, uh, I incorporated a separate pull system for the index finger, which can be tensioned and locked so that you have a point. And this would be more useful in applications such as uh, pressing buttons or typing or poking your neighbor, whatever you want to do. This is 45 individual pieces, 14 uh, retention springs located in each finger joint, um, about seven feet of steel wire to connect it all, and then an assortment of uh, screws and lock nuts. I reached out to a number of different 3D printer companies to see if anybody would be interested in sponsoring this project. See Me CNC, which is a uh, US-based 3D printer company, got back to me um, and expressed their interest and sent me over one of their Rostock Max V2 Delta printers, which is their top of the line model, um, which really helped me to build parts in a timely manner and actually spread out the workload uh, between the printers. And on top of that, this printer had a much larger build volume than the one, uh, the small one that I had at the time, meaning I could build larger portions like the wrist in a single part rather than breaking it up, uh, which helps durability and also uh, makes my job a lot easier to actually design the pieces. Kind of don't know what I'd do without it at this point, so huge thank you goes out to them for that. One of the big stresses of this build was a low budget final piece, and I'm happy to say that I achieved a under $100 budget um, for all of the final materials of the hand. And even for people who don't own or have access to a 3D printer, there's many, many websites such as uh, Shapeways and 3D Hubs where you can order pieces to be 3D printed. So you can download these files, send it to one of those sites, and still get things very economically. With a design this um, complex, it's difficult to start from scratch. So when somebody like me or the other people who have uploaded their designs give you a basis to work off of, 
um, it's great for innovation because you don't have to start from scratch. You have something existing that you know works that the only place you can go from there is upwards. You can find out more about this build and the other builds that I've done at my website, armadis-designs.com. There are also several links in the description of this video, uh, further detailing the design aspect, uh, giving you the design files themselves, and linking you to my website. Mm -hmm.